a trove of rare Ottoman treasures, is going under the hammer this week at Sotheby's in London as part of the annual Arts of the Islamic World auction. The sale will showcase 340 works from three continents, which span a millennium. Our correspondent Sarah Morris went to see the collection. Stretching six metres, this enormous kaleidoscope painting called Towards the Sky is packed with energy and ethereal mysticism. It's a painterly tour de force for its Turkish Jordanian artist Princess Faranlisa Zid, who is regarded as one of the finest female painters, not only of the region, but also in art history. She was known to really immerse herself into her painting. So when she, when she painted, she was almost like a, a dervish in constant uh, meditation. And uh, she would say, sometimes I only know the result of my paintings once I paint for hours and I stop and look at it and then I can actually really grasp what I finished in the end. It's not just paintings that feature in this sale. There is a sumptuous variety of big ticket items from Ottoman weapons to ceramics. The art on display was produced during the rule of multiple Islamic empires from the 9th to 19th centuries. Unseen for decades and up for auction for the first time, these rare textiles illustrate the richness and diversity of Ottoman taste from the 1500s onwards. This large silk, velvet and metal thread panel features the Chintamani pattern, a popular motif of the empire. The triangles of three spots and wavy bands mean auspicious jewel. This is the oldest known brass astrolabe from Cordoba, Muslim Spain. 1,000 years old, it was used to calculate solar altitudes, which helped with navigation and time calculation. Up until the sort of medieval, you know, later medieval period, you know, you had huge amount of uh, progress in the sciences and astronomy, medicine, philosophy, all progressed by um, by Muslim authors and scientists. But um, yeah, some of the great Islamic works of art do come from this early period. I think with Al Andalus, you know, with Islamic Spain, there is this sort of romantic associations with uh, a time when it was this golden age of um, sort of progress in the Islamic world. The past decade has seen enormous growth in the Middle East art market. The appeal is broad and global, with collectors from the US to China. Museums have also shown enthusiasm, with the Louvre in Paris and the Met in New York expanding their collections. And the birth of the Museum of Islamic Art in Doha illustrates the interest the Middle East is now showing in its own work. This room is full of Orientalist art, in other words, paintings depicting scenes in the Middle East, but the artists themselves were actually European. And at the time, photography was just in its infancy. So the legacy these works leave behind is not just beautiful, it's also an incredibly useful glimpse into the history of Middle Eastern life. This early 1800s work by Bohemian painter George Opis is the headline piece of Sotheby's Orientalist sale. Large, lavish and exquisite in its minute detail, it shows the annual Hajj pilgrimage. Nowadays, the Hajj is under the authority of uh, Saudi Arabia, but at the time, in the early 19th century, it was under the authority of the Ottoman sultans. So this has a distinctly Ottoman flavour and all the dignitaries and uh, characters that you see are in fact uh, attired in Ottoman costume. And all the details, including the weapons, are all Ottoman. So it, it's, uh, it's an interesting historical document of the Hajj at the time uh, of the Ottomans. Many of these artworks have come from private collections. Rarely are they for sale, and there's every chance that once bought, they won't be back on the market for another 50 years. And as collectors flock in increasing numbers to acquire Middle Eastern art, the only worry is demand is already outstripping supply. Sarah Morris, TRT World, London.